Thursday, fourth week after Easter, morning meditation, May 6, 2021. Meditations are taken from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choices Teacher in Moral Theology. Act of Faith in the Presence of God, Nomina Patre Fili, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Most holy, adorable, and undivided Trinity, one God and three persons, I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility and render to thee of my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. St. Alphonsus de Liguori, pray for us. Christian soul, Reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, Virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of humility. Litany of humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being culminated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this, our evening morning meditation, through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever Virgin. Ave Maria, gratia pana dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, and benedictus fructus ventris, tui Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, or per nobis peccatoribus, nuc nit hor mortis nostre. Amen. In honor of Saint Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray, Gloria Patria Filio, Spiritus Sancta, Sicud Eret in Principio, Nuc et Semper, in Secula Seculorum. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and it shall be created. You shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost, grant in that same spirit that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in this consolation. Christ our Lord. Amen. Morning Meditation. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. O oh, happy commerce! We renounce the goods of this earth, which are but mire, and we receive in exchange the graces of God and eternal rewards more precious than the purest gold. From the sacred scriptures, we learn that the reward of poverty is most certain and great beyond measure. It is most certain because Jesus Christ has said, quote, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 3. To the other Beatitudes, heaven is promised only as a future reward. 
Blessed are the meek, for they shall possess the land. Matthew 4, 5, verse 4. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Matthew 5, verse 8. But to the poor in spirit, God's kingdom is promised as a present recompense. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because to those that are truly poor in spirit, the Lord gives very great helps, even in this life. Hence, Cornelius de Lapide says that since by decree of God, the kingdom of heaven belongs to the poor, they have a full right to it. The reward of poverty is very secure and great beyond conception. Quote, the less we have here, says St. Teresa, the more we shall enjoy in God's kingdom, in which the mansion of each is proportioned to the love with which we shall have imitated the life of Christ. Unquote. O happy commerce, exclaims St. Peter Damien, where clay is given away and gold received. Unquote. O happy traffic, we renounce the goods of earth, which are but mire, and we receive in exchange the graces of God and eternal rewards more precious than the purest gold. O my Jesus, if hitherto my heart has been attached to the goods of this world, thou henceforth shall be my only treasure. O God of my soul, thou art a good infinitely greater than any other good, and dost deserve infinite love. I esteem and love thee, therefore, above all things, and even more than myself, thou art the only object of my affections. I desire nothing in all this world. If I had my desire, it would be to possess all the treasures and kingdoms of this world for the purpose of renouncing them all, depriving myself of them for love of thee. Come, O oh my love, come and consume in me every affection that is not for thee. Quote, the poor in spirit shall also have the honor of sitting with Jesus Christ as the judges of, this, of the world. Quote, Behold, says St. Peter to Jesus, we have left all things and have followed thee. What therefore shall we have? And Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the seat of his majesty, you shall also sit on twelve seats, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matthew 19, 27, 28. God has promised eternal glory hereafter and a hundredfold in this life to all abandon earthly goods for his sake. Quote, and everyone that has left house or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall possess life eternal, everlasting. Matthew 19, 29. This promise is fulfilled in all the poor in spirit who, because they desire nothing on earth, possess all riches. Quote, as having nothing and possessing all things. 2 Corinthians 6.10 The Redeemer is justly compared riches to thorns. Matthew 13.22 For in proportion to their abundant riches, torment the soul by cares, by fears, and by the desire of increased possessions. Hence, St. Bernard says that while the avaricious, because their desires of riches is never satiated, like mendicants thirst after the goods of this world, the poor in spirit, because they wish for nothing upon earth, despise mammon. Quote, the avaricious man, like a mendicant, hungers after earthly things. The poor man, like a prince, contempts them. Unquote. Oh, how great is the happiness of him who desires and possesses nothing upon earth. He enjoys true peace a blessing more valuable than all worldly goods, which can never content a soul destined to be made happy only by the possession of God. O oh my God, grant that in future I may regard only thee, think only of thee, and sigh after thee alone. The love that thou made thee die on the cross for me makes me die to all my inclinations, and desire only thy holy grace and love. My dear Redeemer, when shall I be entirely thine, as thou art mine? O oh, take me, and make me live only for thy glory, trusting in the merits of thy blood, O oh, my Jesus, and in thy intercession, O oh, my Mother Mary. I hope for all things. Spiritual reading. Vita Tercetto, hail our life, our sweetness. 24. Mary is our sweetness. She renders death sweet to her clients. Quote, he that is a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is proved in distress. Proverbs 6. 17 verse 17 says the book of proverbs we can never know our friends in the time of prosperity it's only in the time of adversity that we see them in their true colors people of the world never abandon a friend as long as he is in prosperity but should misfortunes overtake him and more particularly should he be at the point of death 
they immediately forsake him. Mary does not act thus with her clients. In their afflictions, and more particularly in the sorrows of death, the greatest that can be endured in this world, this good lady and mother, not only does not abandon her faithful servants, but as during our exile, she is our life. So also she is in our last hour, our sweetness, by obtaining for us a calm and happy death. For from the day on which Mary had the privilege and sorrow of being present at the death of Jesus, her son, who was the head of all the predestined, it became her privilege also to assist at their deaths. And for this reason, the Holy Church teaches us to beg this most blessed virgin to assist us, especially at the moment of death. Quote, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Unquote. Oh, how great are the sufferings of the dying. They suffer from remorse of conscience on account of past sins, from fear of the approaching judgment, and from the uncertainty of their eternal salvation. Then it is that hell arms itself and spares no efforts to gain the soul which is on the point of entering eternity, for it knows that only a short time remains in which to gain it, and that if hell then loses it, it loses it forever. Quote, the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, knowing that he hath but a short time. Apocalypse 12.12 12. And for this reason, the enemy of our salvation, whose charge it was to tempt the soul during life, does not choose a death to be alone, but calls others to his assistance, according to the prophet Isaiah. Quote, their houses shall be filled with serpents. Isaiah 13.21 and indeed, they are so, for when a person is at the point of death, the whole place in which he is filled with devil, he is, is filled with devils, who all unite to make him lose his soul. It is related of St. Angelo Avellino that 10,000 devils came to tempt him at his death. The conflict that he had in his agony with the powers of hell was so terrible that all the good religious who assisted him trembled. They saw the saint's face swell to such a degree from agitation that it became quite black. Every limb trembled and was contorted. His eyes shed a torrent of tears. His head shook violently. All gave evidence of the terrible assault he was enduring on the part of his infernal foes. All wept with compassion and redoubled their prayers, and at the same time trembled with fear on seeing a saint die thus. They were, however, consoled at seeing that often, as if seeking for help, the saint turned his eyes toward a devout picture of Mary, for they remembered that during life he had often said that at death Mary would be his refuge. At length, God was pleased to put an end to the contest by granting him a glorious victory. For the contortions of his body ceased, his face resumed its original size and color, and the saint, with his eyes tranquilly fixed on the picture, made a devout inclination to Mary, who is believed then appeared to him. And if, in the act of thanking her, and with a heavenly smile on his countenance, Tranquilly breathe forth his blessed soul into the arms of Mary. At the same moment, a Capuchin nun, who was in her agony, turning to the nuns who surrounded her, said, Recite a Hail Mary, for a saint has just expired. Uh, how quickly do the rebellious spirits fly from the presence of this queen? If at the hour of death we have only the protection of Mary, what need we fear from all our infernal enemies? David, fearing the horrors of death, encouraged himself by placing his reliance on the death of the coming Redeemer and on the intercession of the Virgin Mother. Quote, For though, he says, I should walk in the midst of the shadow of death, thy rod and thy staff, they have comforted me. Psalm 22, verse 4. Cardinal Hugo, explaining these words of the royal prophet, says that the staff signifies the cross and the rod is the intercession of Mary, for she is the rod foretold by the prophet Isaiah. Quote, and there shall come forth out a rod out of the root of Jesse, and a flower shall rise up out of its, his root. Isaiah 11, 1. Quote, this divine mother, says St. Peter Damien, is that powerful rod with which the violence of the infernal enemies is conquered. Therefore, does St. Antononius encourage us, saying, quote, If Mary is for us, who shall be against us? Concluding prayer, I give thee thanks, O God, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will, that I may, in uniformity with your divine will of triune God, keep my resolutions, and keep them well, for the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands 
the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of life, now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that, although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee, and I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay, that thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and grateful as I have been you until now? No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance in thy holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. In nomen Patri, Fili, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Have a blessed morning and day, O slaves of Mary.